The Irish athlete and we hope soon to be Olympian, Phil Healy has been announced as a UPMC health ambassador for the next three years. Previously the sponsor of Phil Healy as the UPMC elite sports scholar for Waterford Institute of Technology. UPMC has agreed to partner with her for a further three years as a UPMC ambassador. I'm delighted that Phil Healy is with us this evening. How are you keeping Phil? Hey, thanks everybody for having me on. Uh, no problem at all. I said uh, soon to be Olympian. Are you comfortable with me saying that? I know you're not officially qualified as of yet, but it does seem like it's just a matter of time. Yeah, so we're down to the final few weeks. Um, the closing date is at the end of the month, so it is a very exciting uh, few weeks ahead. And look, we have the ticket fully secured in the in the mix 4x4, four four, so I, I just need to keep my uh, face on that team and then hopefully uh, get over the line on the individual's uh, events as well. Yeah, so it, the latest lay of the land, and you can correct me if I have any of this wrong, so there's a possibility you could be competing in three separate events in Tokyo in just a few weeks' time. Uh, in the 200 metres, the top 56 in the rankings get there. You're currently 40th. Uh, some of those in the 56 probably won't go anyway, so that means you'll move up. So pretty much guaranteed to be there in the women's 200 metres. In the 400 metres, the top 48 qualify. You're currently 44th but you still have another opportunity at the national championships uh, to improve your ranking there. And we know we saw over in Poland, the Irish 4x400 metre mixed relay team have qualified. You were part of both races. Uh, so I think you can expect to be in the squad. So I presume you're in Olympic mode. You're thinking like an Olympian right now. A hundred percent. And the season is fully focused on that. And Look, it's obviously been uh, a second chance at it with uh, Tokyo um, being postponed from last year to this year. So uh, it's all ramped up again and everything is fully focused on national championships now the weekend after next because that'll be my final race before Tokyo and that's my opportunity to try to push myself up the rankings in the 400 and it'll be the 400 I'll be focusing on at national championships. So uh Hopefully it'll put me in a good position, but it's great for the sport overall that there is so many Irish athletes qualified and that we have a mixed relay team going as well because it gives the opportunity for four that will run on the day, but a squad of six um, to get to Tokyo. Uh, I'm at an age now that when I'm uh, talking to athletes and I ask about their first memories, I get quite depressed as to how recent it is. What's, what's your first Olympic memory? I think for me it uh, dates back to 2008 in Beijing and I just always remember watching Shelly Ann Fraser Price from Jamaica win the 100 and that was a, that was a standout for me and it just happened then uh, 10 years later that I got to race her at London Diamond League in 2018 so that was a bit surreal but like right the whole ways up from uh, 2008 then like you have the likes of David Gillick, Rob Heffern and Derville they were always ones that I looked up to and then even most recently uh, Thomas Barr in 2016 coming forth so there's yeah. definitely fond memories of the Olympics right the way through. Yeah, it was as depressing an answer as I suspected 2008. <laughs> so you don't remember Miles Dungan in the little uh, mini studio in RTE the way a lot of us of uh, my generation do. Uh, you know, what would it mean? What would it mean to get to Tokyo considering everything that's happened over the last year, the doubts as to whether the Olympics will go ahead? It now looks certain that they will go ahead. Have you visualised what it would be like to be on the start line at an Olympic Games? Look, I think, yeah, the the Olympic Games is the pinnacle of everybody's career and is what everyone wants to do and dreams of and aspires to to be. So to for the Games to go ahead this summer is just unbelievable. And obviously the safety and welfare is taken into account of everyone involved. But to get out there to represent the country, obviously it's going to be a very different Olympic Games to uh, to usual. But they're going ahead, and that's all the athletes. Um, are looking for so every athlete is going to go out there and perform to their best and if i can get there in three events that's an absolute bonus because like you the sacrifices every athlete makes across all sports is unbelievable um at all times and especially then when it comes to an olympic year it's it's heightened even more so it has been a difficult year um especially like even just with restrictions and just keeping your bubble really tight just small little things like that and um, definitely make it harder um but uh, it'll all pay off and uh, I'm just looking forward to, to getting out there and putting on that green vest. What's it like for your family? Because, listen, they have supported you all the way up and would love to be there, I'm sure. Would have loved nothing more than to be in Tokyo, family and friends, to be there on that big occasion. And obviously, that's not possible. Uh, have you spoken to them about, about how they're going to 
enjoy the Olympics and what they're going to do? Yeah, and it's certainly hard, you know, like when it is the biggest event and like when it was going to go ahead in 2020, they had planned to go and then when it's taken out of their control that you can't go, it, it is hard, but look, it's going to be the exact same for everybody else. It's not just like that Ireland can't go, but uh, it is difficult. And even away from that, like looking at more COVID restrictions, like I haven't been back home to Cork since um, March after European indoors. So like, Again, these are the sacrifices that you have to make, and that's hard on them as well. And even though Cork and Waterford are really close, but uh, it is um, a long trip for me door to door. But um, obviously, you'd love to have your family and your friends there after everything that they've helped you through. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the the safety has to be taken into account of all involved. Mm. Uh, this is a really exciting time for, for Irish athletics at, at all distances, it feels, but particularly at the sprint distances, we're, we're used to having a lot of success around middle distance and uh, Sonia inspired so many around the middle distance. But at, at sprint at the moment and at your level, like the emergence of Rashida Adeleke and the challenge that she's putting up for national records. I think she has the 200 meter record now by three hundredths of a second. Uh, you still have the 100 by three hundredths of a second. Yeah. Uh, this is, is going to be a, quite a battle over the next couple of years. A hundred percent, and it's it's great for the sport. Like records are, I always say records are there to be broken, and it got everybody to step up their game. Like when I broke the record in 2018, the record stood for 23 years. Now it has only stood for three years, so that's an absolutely super sign. Um, and as well, if you look at the 100, um, there is two athletes that have dropped below 11.4, which was the previous national record, which stood for something like eight to ten years as well. So it's absolutely super that everything is improving. Um, and it keeps me on my toes, it gets me to up their game, as well as the, the younger girls coming through. Mm. Uh, we've spoken a lot on the show over recent months about the shoes and around the spikes and the influence that they're having on times, uh, particularly around 800 metres, 1500 metres. In those shorter distances, the 400 metres, 200 metres, are they having a big difference on times? No, it's definitely more so on the 800 and especially the 1500 upwards. And look, it is it is something new and technology is always developing and uh, there was maybe um, just an unfairness maybe at a certain point because it was the top sponsored athletes that were getting the shoes and they weren't available to the wider public but they are coming on the market now so that will uh, make things a lot fairer and anyone can have the ability to to get the shoes but at the end of the day the shoes may help but you still have to you still have to do the training and the shoes aren't going to do all the the work for you but once that they're on a an open like on the market for everybody that will certainly uh make things a lot uh fairer mm. uh, it is that level playing field like uh, the records and the times are uh, maybe a, a different conversation you know i saw that quote of if everything is amazing nothing is amazing and that the more impressed you are by the times that are being produced when it happens week in week out maybe it's not quite as incredible as it was but for, uh, from an athlete's point of view you're very confident that it is a level playing field, that none of the big suppliers are going to come out three weeks before the Olympics and that there's a select few who are going to get a bit of an advantage? Yeah, like it is hard to know. And even like when you see all these records being broken these days, everybody jumps to, oh, it's the shoes or before it was like, oh, they are doping. So like there's always going to be that like bitterness, that hate towards someone nearly um, improving. But who knows with the with the advancements um, that the top, top athletes have um, available to them. I know the New Balance bike is available in the sprinting side of things on sale. Um, I haven't seen the Nike one on sale yet. So um, that there may be a bit of discrepancies there. But uh, look, you just have to get on with it at the end of the day. And um, there's probably plenty of athletes that have raced in the shoes and have had very poor performances. So some days your body's going to be able, some days your body isn't. So uh, you just have to roll with it. And uh, if they help, we'll all take it there. Mm. Uh, it, by the sounds of it, you, you could drive yourself mad if you started thinking about what other people are doing, which is probably not the best frame of mind to be in a few weeks out from the Olympic Games. A hundred percent. And look, you have to focus on your own thing. And like, if you rewind years ago, it was all around doping and um, people getting caught and people getting away with it. And if you get caught up in all of that, 
saying you're wasting your own energy you have to go out there and perform and do the best that you can do and walk off that track happy um, instead of wasting that energy in the lead up because it is no Olympic Games you work so hard for this and if you let us let all these small things get in the way in the meantime then you're uh, you're putting yourself on the back foot yeah uh, this sponsorship deal that you've extended with UPMC really important I'd imagine because uh, life at an athlete isn't always easy in terms of the finances of it we spend a lot of time in this country focusing on the major sports and the money around the major sports and grants and sometimes athletics and Olympic sports are, are forgotten about a little bit like I'm looking at the carding system and you're at international level and it's 12,000 euro for an international level athlete is the government funding which just seems seems absolutely ridiculous when you have the talent to go to an Olympic Games when you can be a national champion uh, how much of a, an issue and how much of your life do you have to spend thinking about finances and money and the sacrifice of trying to be a high level athlete in this country 100% and it is hard and even with the the 12,000 obviously it is a massive help and I'm very grateful for Sport Ireland for that but end of the day you're a professional athlete the sport is so hard and demanding that it is very hard to to work at the same time and balance a, a full-time job so uh, you do have to make the sacrifices on that front so that's why um, all athletes are indebted to their sponsors and I'm thrilled to to sign a three-year deal with um, UPMC be, and continue on from my time in WIT where I was the UPMC Elite Sports Scholar there. So the, it takes all that worry away um, because obviously there is so many costs, day to, even just day-to-day -day living, not a mind heightened costs of going abroad, getting races in, training camps, and especially around COVID as well, because uh, logistics and different things like that are harder. So um, I'm based in Waterford for my training. So UPMC have opened up a new sports medicine center in WIT Arena where I um, do all of my gym work. So it's absolutely a super facility um, that I have um, available to me. Um, and. I have access to a sports medicine doctor, physios, physiologists, anything that I need, they're a massive support. And to have such a high quality uh, facility in the Southeast is such a great thing for all people, not just on the sports medicine side, it's available um, to the whole community, which is absolutely super. And I'm thrilled to, to have that almost like that worry and it's nearly a security knowing that I have um, a sponsorship deal for three years and their support, which I'm super grateful for. Yeah, that's great. Um, and listen, maybe private support and private investment is always going to be the way forward. And as a current athlete, it's hard and you probably don't want to be distracted by, you know, funding issues. But you can be damn sure if things go well uh, in Tokyo for Irish athletes, there'll be government ministers waiting at the airport. Uh, do you feel at times that there's lip service treated to Olympic athletes when you look at that level of funding? Yeah, and I think people think we are on a lot more funding than we actually are because like 12,000, if you try to live off 12,000 for, for a year, it is extremely hard, not in mind, as I said, all the, the expenses on top of it. But end of the day, you are going out there to perform the best in your sport each and every single day. So yes, you can't get caught up on that, but at the same time, you need that backing and support. And I'm very grateful for all the sponsors that um, have come on board with me because they're the difference in me getting to that level, next level and not. And like um, sport, that's the, the carding system in Ireland across all the sports. And there are certain targets that you have to meet. So 40,000 is the max uh, a sports person will earn in Ireland, um, which is... Um, massive support obviously and end of the day the the results um bring the the finances and uh, that increase in funding but it's a stepping stone of actually getting to the to get those performances is where the support is needed yeah and look it's great to hear that you have that support and you say for three years as well which means it's not just for the next few weeks to get to the two olympics you can actually plan a little bit more long term and start thinking about world championships as well uh, Phil it's been great to talk to you uh, very best of luck at the national championships and we await the confirmation of just how many events you're going to be competing in in Tokyo and then we just can't wait for the Olympics themselves and watch you all in action very best of luck with us super thanks a million